Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, Jesus the Vine, Pastor Jason Beatty teaches how true followers of Jesus reflect his glory, bring powerful change, and reveal his goodness through their lives. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone in the church and everyone listening online. Uh, it's such a privilege and a blessing to come up here again and just preach the Word of God. Um, when Pastor Peter asked me to, to preach the Word of God, we got the message in a, in a men's meeting that we were at with Pastor Wayne. Um, but uh, what I want to talk to you about today and the song we were singing about, Teach Me to Abide, is abiding in the Lord. See, Jesus is the vine. You see, there was a parable that Jesus spoke, and John writes about it in his letters. And this parable is one of the most significant and powerful verses in the Bible. You know, it's so deep, it's so profound, and it's so powerful, and it has such a meaning that it's so important to understand what Jesus is saying in the parable, its intent, and how we can apply it for our lives today. So whether you're a long-life Christian, or you're just beginning your faith journey in Christ, this passage is essential to your walk with him. It's, you know, and, and it's understanding the significance and the transformation that takes place so that we can be more Christ-like in our lives. But first, I want to share a little story with you before I get into that parable. So when I left school, um, I decided to do a horticulture degree, which is a gardening and plants growth degree. As my father at the time, he was in horticulture and he had his own garden center. But part of this degree involved a process known as grafting. You know, so grafting is the process, it's a process of propagation where we take a cutting of one plant and we graft it to another plant or it's fused to another plant. So you could say that the main plant is the vine and the branch then is attached to it. This is known as grafting. Um, but the vine itself is already a fully grown plant. You know, we can also, the reason why we graft is because we can create new roses and a rose bush can have more than one color. This, pro this process is usually done because the main plant, the vine, is stronger, it's disease resistant, it has proven itself to be a good fruitful, fruitful plant, and this is why we graft other plants into it. John writes, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. In this parable, John writes about Jesus saying, remain in me, stay united with me. Jesus is asking his followers to stay constant and consistent in their relationship with him. You know, as followers of Christ, our faith is always put to the test. Um, it may look like years and years of prayer for healing or pain or suffering, and it looks like no matter what you do, that it seems to be like your life is a constant struggle. But regardless, in all situations and circumstances, the Bible said that we need to give thanks to the Lord. So you must remember that Jesus is the true source of our life and our peace. We must remain and abide in Jesus Christ and constant and consistent in our walk, depend on him, and we are intentional with our acts of faith. Therefore, as you receive Jesus Christ, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. You see, when we come to Christ and we repent, and we give our life to him, we enter into a union with Jesus. Not only are we saved through Jesus Christ, but we enter into a relationship. It's not based on salvation, it's based on we want a relationship uh, with him. For example, our spouses, I wouldn't just marry my wife and not talk to her for the rest of my life. Basically, you need to build that relationship so that trust and that foundation and, and that instruction so you can know each other relationally. So our connection with Jesus is what brings us new life. See, when we walk in Christ, we are allowing his word to lead us by following his light. In one of the longest chapters in the Bible, the psalmist goes on to write, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So in this parable, Jesus explains, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. 
It may seem or look like Jesus is speaking on riddles in a lot of these parables. But Jesus actually is talking to these people quite easily. A lot of the followers of Jesus at the time were farmers or growers. or So basically, they were used to to plants, they were used to harvesting, harvesting. And this process of grafting dates back a thousand years before Christ. So before Christ, people were already familiar with grafting of plants to make them stronger. So in this parable John writes about it, Jesus is saying, just like a plant that has been grafted, we are cut from our old way of life and we are now connected to Jesus Christ. See, if we have declared Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior, and we've put our belief in him, we should now be reflecting the glory of God in our lives, right? And, you know, we, are, we need to reflect his glory and we need to be led by the spirit of God and obeying his word. So we can't say we're, increased, we're, 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 we're in Christ and not obey his word. See, so see, when we attach to Jesus Christ, when we attach to the vine, which is Jesus, our old way of life no longer should be allowed or have control of our life. Just like the vine, when we are cut off from the old way of life, we are attached to something new, which is the vine. What you need to understand is once we're cut off from our way of life, there ain't no going back. There's no going back once you're cut off from your plant. Now you're grafted into the body of Christ. So Christ goes on a little bit further and we'll see what happens is when we don't abide in him. We don't go back to the old way of life. We die. You know, our spiritual life dies, our eternal life. So we need to be very careful. So the spirit of God that now lives within us should transform us and guide us in the righteousness through Jesus Christ. Because it says that his righteousness now transfer to us through the, what we've just received through the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, right? So our unity with Jesus should manifest inside of us a genuine compassion and love for others. So as we walk with Christ, our actions and relationships should no longer be in alignment with the world, but in alignment with Jesus' word, with the word of God. It takes about five to eight years for a rose to fully graft to the plant. And would you believe that out of only a few roses that are launched every year, 50,000 of them would die? 50,000 roses would die because they have been rejected from the vine because they haven't accepted the change or the process of grafting. So there is a study actually in plants called epigenetics. And what it does, the study of how behaviors and the environment cause changes that affect your genes work. This is both in plants and animals. So in epigenetics, there's chemical markers that act on your existing genes or your DNA, and they can turn them on and off. So it can determine whether a cell becomes a muscle cell, a skin cell, and determine how a plant reacts in different soils, in different climates, and in regards to a disease. So just like in epigenetics, our unity with Christ changes the way we act in different situations, right? It should, that, that's the process. It should be. Uh, so the old problems we have might not go away. You know, the difficult relationships and struggles might not go away. They can still remain. But now the old ways and our old reactions and situations and the acts of faith and relationships now are changed in accordance to Christ and his, our union with the vine, right? So further on in this passage, Jesus goes to say, I am the vine, you are the branches, who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. See, Jesus is saying, because you are, no, because you are now grafted onto the vine, your source of life comes from him. Your old source no longer feeds you. So you cannot go back to your old source. Once you're attached to the vine, you're cut off from the old way of life. You are now a new creation in Jesus. A new person that's created for him, in him, and for his glory. Then Jesus goes on to say something very profound 
and almost shocking in his word. And it's the part we don't like to hear, and it's the part we don't like to listen to, and it's the part we often don't want to believe. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up, and they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. That's pretty hard to hear, isn't it? That, that, that's pretty difficult even to me to understand this. Jesus is saying that if you don't abide in me and my word abides in you, you ain't going back to your old way of life. You know, it withers up, it rots, it falls off and dies. But we can still think that we're remaining and abiding in Jesus, but we're not fruitful. We can still come to church on a Sunday and think we're abiding in Christ, but when we go out there, we're different people and our lives, lives don't reflect him, don't reflect his glory, and don't, we don't follow the word of God. See, Jesus here, this is almost a commandment Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, and he's given us a warning, you know, uh, to abide in him and to remain in him. Jesus is telling this parable to his followers, not unbelievers. He's talking to the body of Christ He's talking to people that are already in him. He is speaking to believers. See, Jesus is telling us to be careful not to try to fall back into our old ways of life. See, we all know what happens sometimes when you hear of, uh, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you give up that sin and you go back to it, it comes back much stronger than it was before. And to fall back into our old ways, we have to understand that we're, we're now cut from that old way of life and we should be following Jesus' example to be more Christ-like in our life. So our union with Jesus should bring transformation, right? And we should react different in certain situations just like in epigenetics. Now I can tell you for a fact I'm no saint. I don't always act that way with my wife and I'm the first to put my hand up. You know, you, you, we, we're all the same. We're only human. We're all fault. Jesus says that none, there's no one righteous. Only God is righteous. Only Jesus was without sin. We are all with sin. You know, it doesn't mean because we might get angry sometimes that we don't abide in Christ. You know, that transformation, just like it takes five to ten years for a plant to fully graft into the vine, we are being transformed slowly into the, into the image of Jesus Christ, you know, to our, to our point where we are returning back to the Father, you know, to sit at that glorious table and have communion with him. So his word and unity in him should now bring that change in us. So now we are in him, we walk away from our old ways and the way of the world. How many of y'all have, 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 have gone back and you're still living in the old ways of unforgiveness? We had a friend one time who gave her lies to Christ and we prayed for her and we said that you now are a new creation in Jesus. The old ways of life have no power over your life anymore. You are cut from that. But the enemy sometimes wants to implant that and saying you're not good enough. You know what I mean? That's, you, you're angry with your wife the other day. You're a hypocrite. You know, you don't follow Christ. You know, you're just following the old ways of life, but Jesus says we are cut from our old way of lives and now are in him, to abide in him, to follow him, you know? So now we are in him and we walk away from our old, from, from, from our old ways and the way of the world. We should now be focused on our relationship with Jesus, right? <clears throat> so now that we are in Christ, there should be a transformation that takes place. Just as a new branch takes time to establish and grow fully and in unity with the vine, our lives should start to change because of our grafting onto Christ and now he's feeding us. This process of epigenetics, though, it's reversible. This is the hardest thing to hear. The, the process of epigenetics is reversible. So the very life source that the vine has been feeding the branch can decide any time to cut off that life source from the branch. Because like the 50,000 we were just hearing about, it doesn't accept the changes. But the plants, the branch still thinks it's abiding part of the vine because it's been so long now, five or eight years, still it's feeding it and feeding it, but the process is not changing place. The plant is not producing fruit. 
The plant is not producing flowers. You know, Paul writes in scripture, you know, that you can tell of our faith by the fruit that we produce. You know, so we ask, like, are we producing fruit? Is it good fruit? What are we bearing? So that's why 50,000 plants or roses don't fail to graft properly every year because they reject the changes that are supposed to happen. There is no fruit, so the vine is cut off. The vine cuts off the life source from the branch. So Jesus is stating in this parable, if we say we are in him, we have accepted him as our Lord and our Savior, we claim to be grafted to him, but our unity with him doesn't bring change or bear any good fruit, then we'll be cut from the vine. That's pretty hard to, to, hard, you know, to understand that because for me, it's, it's, it's hard to, to hear that word. It's so, it's almost you feel like you're being rejected, but you know what I mean? He's, 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 you know, what happens like when you, when you're attached to, the, to one plant and one part of the plant is disease, unless that plant is cut off from the vine, it can affect the other branches, right? That disease can manifest and start to, to cause disease and rot within it. You see, we can fool ourselves and we might be able to fool other people into thinking that because we have accepted Christ, we are saved. But we're not fooling him and we're not fooling Christ. See, ultimately, our spiritual life and our salvation will, can come into question. I'm not one of these people that believe in once saved, always saved, because even the enemy knows Jesus Christ. They believe in him, but they don't follow him. We can say we follow him, but our life doesn't resemble his goodness and, his, and, and, and reflect his glory. It's like one thing I, God gave me a vision of, the moon, <clears throat> and it's like, you know, the, sun, the moon doesn't have any glory of its own. It's just reflecting the sun. That's all it's doing. So like us now, when we are here, we are heart, when, we are, when we are now in Christ, in the vine, we're to reflect the glory of Jesus through our lives. So it says, as we dry up, we become stale. Our lives start to resemble the old ways of our life. We can know our walk with Christ and by our fruit. If we say that we are in Jesus and our lives don't resemble the transformation of him, then the fruit we bear is rotten, and ultimately we are cut from the vine. But then Jesus goes on to say, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. So when you leave here today, ask this question to yourself. And this is a question for me, because first God gives scripture for you, right? It's like, check yourself first. Check your own thorn before you check someone else's speck. Right. You know, that's what well, we have to check ourselves first. Yeah. You know, we, we can criticize and condemn other people pretty fast. We're pretty fast to do that in the church, right? But we never look in the mirror sometimes and right. go back to ourselves. And that, that's pride, really. You know, that's just, that's just pride. So ask yourself this question today. Does your life reflect the change of the vine or are you being transformed into the image of Christ? Does your life reflect him? That can be anything. That can be compassion. That could be love. As I said earlier, we've been so privileged since we arrived here. Um, now you have to understand, works. We can't earn salvation. You know, works that we do at Christ are a manifestation of his goodness through us. That's what he's talking about, our fruit. Our works are a manifestation of the glory of God. It shows that we are saved, right? We don't do it to gain favor or to gain blessings, to gain finances. It's basically we do because we love Jesus. And Jesus says the second greatest command was to love your neighbors as yourself, right? Love God first, put all your hope you know, through him. And second one is love your neighbors as yourself. We've been so privileged that the Lord has opened doors for us here. And we've seen a, a, 
that the elderly or people that are sick are worst hit by their faith. You know, they could have been in church all their life, attached to the vine. Once they go back to the houses, the enemy starts to bombard them. You know, they're sick, they're suffering from cancer, disease, and they think now that God is punishing them because of it all. They're praying and they're continuing to pray and they're not being healed. You know, we have to understand, Jesus says in his word, to die is to gain, to live is for Christ. You know, we have to take our mindset off our earthly flesh and put our mindset on our eternal life with Jesus. It doesn't matter what happens to us here, this side or that side, we're with Christ. You know what I mean? It's, we, we always, my, as my wife said, she's a, she's a prophetic word herself. She goes, you know, everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. Yeah. Do you know, we look forward to that time, you know? So as I said, does your life reflect that change of Jesus in your life? Are you walking in him and does the word abide in you? Yeah. Yeah. Does his word abide in you? We've been so privileged the last couple of weeks also since I've come here um, with Pastor Wayne. We've been helping him out. I just, he's building a barn and all there in, um, in Elizabeth City. But it's a blessing. You know, I do it because I want to help my brothers. And that's what we're called to do, right? We're supposed to help others. And when, when I come over to his house, you know, he speaks the word into me and we speak to each other that we build that relationship, you know, which builds, builds each other up in Christ, you know, and that's, that's what we're called here to do. So when we're going out to these houses, people just open their doors because they want to receive the body. Like we, we, there was a lady who had surgery, uh, I think it was intestinal surgery. She had half her intestines removed from cancer. And she, she, she went home and, and she struggled because she said, I've been praying for healing, but it didn't happen. And I, I went to hospital. It says, but, the, the, you know, look, I, the, they cut it out. And she was sick then after a while. And she sat in her house just, and this, the fruit just started to fade. You know, she was losing faith and, and she wasn't being built up for the body of Christ. And the Lord laid on my heart one day, says, you need to go in our house on Sunday and have communion with her. She needs to receive the body and the blood of Christ. She needs to remember me, that she's part of me, connected me, connected through me. So we went in that Sunday and when we get there, lo and behold, when we take communion, she said she'd been praying for weeks for someone to come and have communion with her. You know, and, and if, if this is, so, you know, we, this Christmas, we need to look at our friends and our family and say, are we doing everything that they can abide or just show compassion and love through our lives and reach out to people? So for all and, and for everyone that is here today, I just want to say, if you're watching this today and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, the Lord, your saving, then confess him so today and abide in his word. It says in Romans, it says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is by your mouth that you profess your faith and saved. Father, Open our minds now to hear your word and understand more about who you are. Bless your servant as he shares your word and bless us to walk in your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.